Hey everyone, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video. Today, officially Android 13 has launched and I have already installed it on my Pixel 6 Pro over here and I'll be walking you through all the features. I'll try to categorize them as well as possible and you can probably see the chapters down below and maybe that will help you out a bit. By the way, if you haven't followed the betas and I'll be referring to those sometimes in the video, check them out in the playlist over here. You will be up to speed. The good part is I have two pixels this time so that's why I can compare it with the stable and Android 12 build so you know exactly all the changes between your Android 12 and what all are getting added to Android 13 and this is the Pixel 6a I recently reviewed it I think you should watch the review although it is not with the Android 13 build which is coming to the Pixel 6a so yeah head up to the link over here or the description down below and watch the full review of the Pixel 6a not just that I promise to revisit the Pixel 6a with Android 13 and I will be doing that so make sure you like this video and stay subscribe so that you don't miss out on that now without any further ado let's get to android 13 and all the new features just to give you some context android 13 is not a complete overhaul like android 12 was it's just about refinements and addition of meaningful features and i'll be covering all of them there might not be a lot of user facing features in terms of ui especially but there are a lot of small features which could add value to your life so this is Shreyas and let's Take that out. All right, so on the right, I have my Pixel 6 Pro running Android 13 stable. And on the left, we have the Pixel 6a running Android 12 stable. Now, just for reference, let's just go into the settings, go into our about phone, go to the Android version and you can see the easter egg looks similar but once i move this over here to the one clock position it runs into the android 13 now you can see a bit of difference in colors but the thing is about when i hold down on android 12 nothing really happens but on android 13 when you hold down it switches between emojis so this is the first little change and the easter egg google always puts into their new you know android builds and this is kind of it it's something different unique first seen in android 13 beta 4.1 but yeah that's about the easter egg let's start with the ui changes now in the ui changes for example if i go into the permission settings like i have denied a lot of permissions to my messages app so now when i continue you can see the little bit change in the ui over here in terms of the fill colors of the buttons over here so if i just allow now when i go into permissions you can see another allowed tab which is there called notifications now this permission does not exist for android 12 build so in android 13 you for privacy focus and even for removing annoying notifications from apps you don't intend to get notifications first time when you install a newly launched app you will get a pop-up to al allow notifications or not and you can just deny that permission so that's the biggest change in terms of notification permissions so let's just go into the lock screen of these two you can see how the lock screens are a bit different and how the notifications are laid out so over here you can see that all the extra notifications are stacked up on the bottom and over here uh, it is stacked up into a pill with multiple notifications not to mention the redesigned music ui which is again a change from android 12 which already got a change compared to android 11 but yeah we have a change once again not just that once we expand it you can see how there is a slight animation change and how much space the music ui takes so yeah here's how notifications look on the lock screen now let's go into the phone now while getting into the phone there is a slight animation change when you unlock the phone so if you see over here it's a very quick opening up but over here the icons will slowly just come up to the foreground and that's a bit of a change i will try to slow it down and show it again So that's a small change you see while unlocking your phone. 
Speaking of the lock screen, there has been a small change to the device control or home control menu. So when you see here, first of all, the logo is a bit different than what it is here. And when I launch it, it has a slight different animation. Not just that, here you have gotten an additional setting of turning on and off devices from the lock screen itself. Like for example, if I do it, it will ask me for my fingerprint or biometric unlock. Whereas if I tap here, it just works from here. Now for this, you have to go to a setting. So let's just go. So for that, you go into the display menu, then go into lock screen. And you can see over here where it shows show device controls should obviously be on. But over here, you have a thing called control from locked device. So over here, you don't need to put in your pin, biometrics, fingerprint, anything like that. But you can just log in and just open your phone and just tap on the device you want to unlock. When I drag down the notification check, you can see how different the music UI is over here. It takes up a larger space. Not just that, now if I change music, it will just stick to the same uh, color which is there with your material U theming. But over here, if I change the music, you can see how the colors change over here with the material U as per the. Also, there are few different uh, look and feel about the devices over here which are listed. So you can see over here there is a fill pill color over here rather than a regular slider and that's something different. Talking about the music UI, you can see that r rather than a straight line over here, the seek bar has a squiggly line over here which kind of gives you a better visual representation of how much you have gone into the music. You have a more prominent pause button to the right but as of now this is only limited to the YouTube music app. The one thing you miss out is the like and dislike button over here which is not present anymore but you can shuffle and you know repeat your songs from here itself if you see the app icon was below the album art before which has gotten a more prominent place over here in the ui so again if you can see when i change songs the material you theming is sticking to the same thing whereas here it keeps on changing with the same animation now while we are here in the quick settings panel let's just see what difference is there over here in terms of the arrangement of the edit power and settings icon so the edit icon has moved over here so you can hit here to see similar animations over here no big change but the user icon and the power icon have moved over here so you can see how the animation is different with the user icon and with the power icon as well. The animation is the same, but it's coming up from the right hand corner over here, which is a bit different. So that's something nice. It makes it more reachable. But the other thing why it is probably done so is because when I turn on an application which might be running in the background, you can see over here one app is active is written over here. And when you tap on it, you can see the YouTube music app since the music is playing in the background, it is coming up over here. Now this could happen and help you with all other background apps that might be intrusive, eating up background resources as well as battery life. So I think it's a good indicator to help you out, figure out what apps are running in the background at any point in time. And as you can see, the music is playing and the YouTube music app is active. I can just kill this app by hitting stop. The media player has disappeared from the notification panel. All right, another important thing which is there over here is that a quick access clipboard so if I just select some text over here, when you hit copy of any text on Android 12, you don't really get to know, although it might be copied in your clipboard. But in Android 13, when I hit copy, a clipboard over here pop pops up. And even before sending, you might be able to, you know, just edit some few things and then send it over here. You can just hit done and it will get saved in your clipboard accordingly. When you hit share, it will open up your share sheet as usual and then send it off. And it, this could be really helpful as you have a complete visibility of what's going on. Now the next difference is also how you move into the settings app so that settings icon and the placement of it is a bit different. So you move into the settings icon and then you go into sound and vibration. When you move into the vibration and haptic settings, you have a few more controls over here. Like you can set a separate ring vibration and also have a toggle for vibrate first and then ring gradually. So I think that's really nice. Next is you have separate sliders for notification and alarm. Here there is only for touch feedback, which is also moved down below, but the same exists for media as well. 
Now these are more separations into your vibration feedback and how haptics are spread out. In Android 12 L already it was really well done and I really enjoyed using it but in Android 13 it is giving you more intricate control of it. And not just that these will dynamically change based on the profile you have set like right now it's on vibrate so if I hit mute all these just disappear but when I hit mute over here you can see the few of them got disabled but the ones for the alarm touch feedback and media have remained and you can further customize those. So this is a really nice touch by Google in terms of the menu arrangement and it being contextual based on the profile you have selected. So yeah, that's the difference moving into the vibration mode. You can again see the other uh, grayed out icons have come up in the menu as live. While we are in the settings, let's just go into the display settings over here. If I go into display size and text, you can see over here display size and font size are two different menus and you get an idea about that. But once you go into this menu, it has been consolidated into one. You have font size and display size with options of accessibility features like bold and high contrast text, which is not present over here and split across two menus. And that's a difference. And I think the consolidation of uh, features and same, similar type of settings is a really nice touch over here in Android 13. Continuing with UI changes, you can see over here we have different wallpapers, but let me just quickly change the wallpaper into the same wallpaper as set over there. All right, so now I have both the phones with the similar wallpaper. Let me just turn down the brightness a tad bit. And here is the difference in terms of theming. So when I go into wallpaper and style, you can see only four options that are coming up for uh, Android 12. Over here, I have four options which have a bit of a different tonality, which is similar to what you see here. But when I scroll over here, I get almost three more sets of options, but you have basic colors and even in basic colors over here, you only had four options. But in Android 13, you get a few more pastel and basic looking options, including these two tone looked as well, which has been added. It will be preloaded and applicable for any wallpaper you use because only when you choose wallpaper colors is when it is in cohesion with the wallpapers you have set over here. There is a small UI design change in the pixel tips layout. You can see some tiles, uh, you know, arranged over here in the pixel tips app, whereas the UI over here has changed slightly. I think it could help in better navigation. Although the contents of it is mostly same and few things have been added, which are probably there in Android 13, but not in Android 12. All right, few more additions will be in terms of the quick toggles. Now let's just quickly go into the quick toggles and you can see few quick toggles have been added over here. The calculator was added with Android 12 L. But if you see over here, there is a scan QR code which is combined with Google Lens. So that's a difference you can see. And just to show you how it works, uh, here it won't be working. But over here, if I just open the scan QR code, it will open and you can see how it looks in terms of quickly doing a QR scan if you have anything. Not just that, you get an addition of a 100 mode quick toggle as well. And you can go into the 100 mode settings and obviously turn on the accessibility feature of the turning on a 100 mode from over here. New thing that has been added into the settings over here is once you go into your system then gestures is you had quick tap on most of the Pixel 5 and above devices. But the one extra thing which has been very much anticipated and added over here is going to be toggling torch. Now before it wasn't there at all, you can see over here. So I had set it to taking screenshots, but now you can toggle torch with a double tap over here. And that's something really neat. Okay, one very useful feature which I found when you go into the app info for any other app and even first party or third party app, you can select over here a language. Now over here, you don't have an option for it and it just takes your system language. But in Android 13 now, if you're multilingual, especially with your social media apps, you can set a particular app, uh, you know, language per app at, as of now with a lot of regional uh, languages included as well to reflect in your app settings as well. So for example, if I set it to Hindi over here and I go into the calculator app, although the numbers are over here, but you can see over here, the app language has changed completely. A new inclusion in the developer settings, especially 
especially if you scroll down all the way which is not present over here but on android 13 you get a mode called as stylus handwriting input now this i don't know if it is applicable for the pixel 6 pro or not or even any other pixels so over here again in the developer settings you get an option for predictive back animation now unfortunately i couldn't really get it to work it was only working with few of the apps for example what i saw very recently was that in google keep it was working but yeah i couldn't get it to work but definitely it is a something addition the whole point of predictive back is that if you hold on to the back button long enough if it will directly go back to the home screen rather than going back on the same app or any other page if there now subtle ui changes which you will see is that when you go into the same menus there is a difference in animations like for example if i go into my battery settings it will prop up from the between but over here if i do it it will slide into a new menu just to show you again in slow motion maybe Another small section difference when you, although we are in the battery section, if you go into battery saver over here and you set a schedule, if you do it based on percentage, for example, you can only go down to 10% now, which was previously allowed till 5%. A small change in the home screen will be the Google lens icon. You can see over here, the Google lens icon looks a bit different over here. So that's there. This is the newer Google lens icon that's going to be used and over here, rest all remains the same not just that if you go into your bedtime mode you can see over here options for customization that has changed a bit the um, you know arrangement of it is a bit different with a small animation if i resume it you can see this particular animation which isn't over here at all it's really nice touch apart from that you have a bedtime routine which you can again set up which is a whole menu up here rather than you know consolidated and in customization you get a new option when you go into screen options over here where these are consolidated and you can dim wallpaper when bedtime mode is on so for example just remove this widget you can see how it looks with bedtime mode off but when i turn on bedtime mode you can see the dimmed wallpaper it really relaxes and the good part about this is that you already have this uh, quick toggle for extra dim now in extra dim what happens is that everything goes dim including the app icons which is a bit different so if you turn off extra dim and turn on bedtime mode for example you can see how the app icons are of the same brightness as probably a screen would be on regular usage but the wallpaper itself is the only thing which gets dim all text etc remains the same brightness as it is for your system wide brightness one more thing if you are using the multi user over here let's go into users multiple users when you turn it on you can see a bit of a different menu in terms of selection of the profile pictures over here as well you get a few preset colors as well as the different ui over here which makes the picture as the center of attraction and the rest behind it so when you go into screencast you can see over here my devices but the arrangement over here with the pill shape color again adopting more of material u rather than on the pixel 6a running android 12 you can see it has a contrasting color but this is more easily identifiable also the alignment is very central aligned for the top headers that is cast screen to device but rest all are bigger in font as well as arranged better in this particular ui on android 13. so that's kind of it about all the small changes that you see in android 13 compared to android 12 now I will again revisit the Pixel 6a after using it for a week or two and give you a review about it. This is Android 13. Every small change that I know about and I could find out about are listed in this video. So if you really like this video, give this video a thumbs up and I would really appreciate if you subscribe and turn on notifications to know whenever I put up a new video. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.